it's Marty from 91X on with one of my punk heroes, Jay Bentley, because Bad Religion, 40 years in it, have put out an autobiography, a tell-all. What exactly is Do What You Want, the new memoir of the band? Uh, I think it's as much information as we could stuff into 300 plus pages that would that would describe 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> which, yeah. which really, we stopped and thought about it. All, all we talked about were things that we remembered, but that certainly doesn't mean all the things that we forgot. Jay Ben, <laughs> the player of Bad Religion. Thanks for being on with us. Thanks for documenting your years of music and brotherhood and time on the road and everything. What made you guys want to write this with Jim Rulin, who I have to ask you about in a minute too? Uh, you know, I, I think we started talking about the idea of a book a few years ago. I'm not sure what the, what the Kickstarter for it was other than uh, other, other bands were writing books that we knew. Uh, you know, Jim wrote the, the Keith Morris book and no effects put out a book and we, we'd already been, kind of talking about it just didn't really know how to get started and uh our tour manager rick is sort of a uh he's the right guy to get things done and he just yeah. kind of said i'll i'll make this happen yeah. <laughs> and just sort of went out and, and kicked some major butt and got this thing going yeah who in, the, who in the band has been the greatest documentarian of you guys over the years either photographer or storyteller or we're going to write this in a book one day and give it to Jim. I, I think that everybody sort of has their own, uh, their own way of documenting the time. I know Greg has been taking a lot of pictures over the years. Um, for me, I just work on memory and, and for some reason I seem to be able to remember details about things that happened years and years ago. Uh, everybody has their own sort of, way of remembering things. Brian has some amazing videos that like he'll, he'll pull up. He was the first one to sort of bring a handy cam out on tour way back when. Yeah. So I think, I think co collectively we're a better storyteller than individually. And then when you're compiling stories and recounts of times past, was everybody included in the making of this book or did you use certain members specifically or? Okay. The direction that we gave to Jim Rulin was talk to everybody, call everybody. We gave him everybody's numbers. And so he did, he reached out and talked to everybody that had anything to do with the band. Even some of the drummers that were only in for maybe a month or two. Yeah. Yeah. And get the full so story. The, full the only person that, that didn't really respond. Right. And so the only person that didn't respond to uh, Jim was Greg Hetson. And we just said, that's, that's his decision. Oh, okay. So whatever. Yeah. So Jim, obviously, with the Keith Morris book, which was just a delight of, of, of sadness and super awesomeness, you know what I mean? Just the, his, his yeah, Jim. Yeah, was totally. that part of the inspiration to ch choose Jim, or did you guys know Jim previously? It, no, it didn't, really, it, it, it didn't really sway us either way about using Jim. I think Jim's pedigree coming from a writer for for the zines that he did and just kind of being a punk rock guy who had a little more understanding of our scene than just hiring a writer yeah. helped us yeah. decide like he's going to ask the right questions he's going to yeah. dig in the right places he's not going to he's not going to go chasing um you know rock and roll uh debauchery stories because that's just that's not really what we are and and why waste that time yeah and there's a lingo too that you kind of got to speak when you are kind of mining that information from people who are there you know right where to take right. them uh, uh in their you know memories and, and what what happened and, and how it went well uh, right and, and you know he was he was both west coast and east coast savvy so it helped him a lot weirdest gig you guys ever played and i know a lot of it comes out in the book of uh, you know that one time when but your weirdest gig opening for neil young uh in italy and it wasn't a festival it was a neil young show and we were one of three bands that were opening for him and man nobody there liked us and that was okay <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and then, yeah. Like, looked on each other's faces when you were done, which is like probably just like that was weird. <laughs> uh, no, we we didn't even make like we by the third song we actually huddled on stage and said this is not going over very well. <laughs> so so we didn't know what to do and we said let's make them hate us more. <laughs> and so that's what that that's what we did. We just decided to just like look, they're never going to like us, so let's just make them hate us more. <laughs> uh the Italians looking back at you the priceless I'm sure. Um favorite gig, favorite gig you you've played. Maybe it was a me first and the gimme's gig, I don't know. Uh yeah, god I like those. Those are all, all the gimme's gigs are really fun. Okay, so just just last year at the I think it was last year at the end of last year we were in Australia. No, it was the year before that. Oh god, I don't even remember when it was. The time is now just Anyway, so yeah, I'm with the Gimmies, and we were we got onto a very super metal festival, super metal, <laughs> and we're out there in these gold lame shirts playing Gloria Estefan, and these guys were dancing, and I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. These guys, these guys are dancing, and I, and like I'm like, I get it, and I don't get it, and this is the greatest part about music is that like you really can. Uh, you can drive an emotion into anybody if it's right. If the timing is right, you can really hit the nail on the head. And that was that. I know. And you know, forty years in, that's a moment for me of going like, "This is beautiful." Yeah, I, I was lucky to introduce you guys on stage at Street Scene here at San Diego, two thousand four, two thousand four, I think it was. REM were here, and um. I remember I, you being, uh, full disclosure, uh, my favorite band. <laughs> the the energy out in front of the crowd so amazing. Eddie Vedder, I think, was in the crowd that night. I don't know if you remember that too. Um, I think I but, think yeah I, th I heard that. Yeah, and uh, you, I'm introducing you guys, and you just you start walking out on stage behind me, and all of a sudden I'm like, you know, I'm I'm like, oh my god, here we go. Here's Jay. Here's Brian. Greg's coming around the corner. What the hell is happening? Is this my life? Oh my God. Um, that's literally probably my favorite San Diego moment in my life because I'm like, I'm, uh, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> uh, just, just, uh, trembling and shaking and just it, the joy that came over me, like a warm feeling. So amazing. Uh, we are San Diego radio station. Do you have a favorite San Diego moment? Jay Bentley of Bad Religion. That was a, you know, getting to that show was the one where we were stuck in Vegas and and we were going to be late. That was the Pistols show, right? The Sex Pistols yep. were on that street yep. scene. Yep. So right. so we we called and said we our our flight is canceled. We can't get into town. We're having all this problem getting out of Vegas. And and we were on the phone with some of the Pistols people and we said, "Hey, we might need to switch spots with you. We know this is crazy." you know, whatever. And Leiden said, it'll cost you a hundred grand or something. And we're like, Oh, can't do that. So <laughs> we, we ended up, we, we got on a plane and had a police escort through downtown. And I mean, we were screaming doing 90 miles an hour through downtown with a yeah. police escort to get to stage. I go, this is the greatest San Diego moment ever. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be. So yeah, for sure. You guys play that. That I saw you guys play that show at the Troubadour, the anniversary show when you, I think it was uh, Suffer front to back and greatest hits. And, and that was just a couple of years ago. Oh my gosh. I hope that we get to get in front of you again sometime soon, but I, I would like to share one last thing, if that's okay. From my Instagram, sure. I'm, I'm uh, tasked with bringing special moments to the audience that we get to do where you guys, you know, leave some passes for us or, you know, we get to come either write about it or report about it for the radio. So I'm going to play you something real quick. This is my little Instagram stories. You don't have to react to it. You can say pass if you hear it and go, I got nothing to say. But I'm just going to play <laughs> some and tell you if you can you can hear it. And this is me. This is actually a, this is kind of a tribute to you, Jay. Hold on a second. Somebody asked me, how many times are you going to see bad religion in your life? I'm like, as many as I can. Brian Baker with the white pants at the end. Check it out.
Now, some of you, I want to see you raise your hands. Uh, this must be the first time you've seen Bad Religion. Let's see. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are good people. I think go so. Go do good stuff. Go good. Go do good stuff. Thanks, Jay. Yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah, do what you want. The new Bad Religion book. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, man. Thanks, Marty. Ninety-one X.